Hey everybody, welcome to day number four. I just want to say thank you for the journey, this seven day journey that we are going through together, that we might grow in prayer and that our desire and, and passion for spiritual awakening would begin to grow as we learn about various spiritual awakenings and as we are equipped to pray. So I'm grateful that we have already talked about the Jesus movement and the Asbury revival. And then yesterday we talked about the prayer revival of 1858. God has always been a God who revives. Well, uh, today I want to talk about another revival that you've probably never heard of, and it's the Canadian revival. And the main person involved in that revival is a gentleman, again, you've never heard of, but his name is Bill McLeod. Bill McLeod became the pastor of a small little Baptist church in Saskatchewan, Canada in 1962. And there were about 175 people in the church. And uh, as he got there, he got to know the people. And before too long, he invited the people to participate in an evangelistic outreach, to go out and, and talk to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. So he, he built it up and campaigned for it. And when the, the day came to have the outreach, nobody showed up. Nobody. Well, not to be deterred, uh, Bill McLeod thought, well, maybe they just need trained to learn more about how to share their faith. So he had classes for several weeks, and the day came again that they were these now these trained individuals would go out and share their faith. And so he put the date out there, and, and on that night, two people showed up. Two people. Many more were trained, but only two people showed up. It was then that Bill McLeod knew that it wasn't a knowledge problem or a hands problem. It was a heart problem and that they needed to experience revival if they were going to see awakening with the lost people getting saved. So he took the call to be a person of prayer and to call his church to prayer very seriously. So he began with his 10 deacons and began to have weekly prayer meetings with the deacons and, and would plead with them to pray for revival. And sure enough, they labored for five years in praying for revival. The deacons began to pray for revival, and one deacon eventually got right with another deacon, and things just began to happen in the church, and the, the prayer meetings began to grow in the church. The children's prayer meeting grew in the church. They had a prayer meeting for the children and the youth and the adults. Uh, Bill McLeod said, uh, Miss Sunday morning if you must. Miss Sunday night if you have to. Miss the prayer meeting if you're dead. The prayer meeting was the most important service of their week. And that meeting grew and grew and grew. They would take 30 minutes after every Sunday morning service and they would pray for revival. Families were encouraged in their homes before they ate, before they slept, to take time as a family and to pray for revival. So... They did this for five years. They labored, and then the Lord put on Pastor Bill McLeod's heart to have an evangelistic meeting. And that night at the meeting, there was probably just a few hundred people who showed up on that Wednesday night. But by the time Saturday night rolled around, there were 600 people there at the meeting. They went another week. By the end of the next week, there were over 2,400 people in the meeting. So much so, they had to get a much larger auditorium and this revival did not last one week two weeks or three weeks it lasted seven plus weeks and by the end of this thing hundreds of churches were touched a nation was shaken for revival and three thousand plus people went out as a result of this revival taking the gospel everywhere all because one person got burdened to pray for revival. I want to encourage you and me today on this day, on this day four, to begin to desire revival. Revival is authentic and real Christianity. A Christianity that touches the world. A Christianity that a lost world is hungry for. We need real Christianity. We need we need normal Christianity. Leonard Ravenhill said the church is so subnormal that if it ever became normal once again, like the New Testament, it would seem abnormal. We need a touch of God in revival. So I want to encourage you today to continue to press into the content. 
Let's grow in prayer together. Let's pray more today than we ever have before. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for revival. And let's see what God might do. If Revival is what happens when God shows up. And I want God to show up with all of my heart. So thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless.